Welcome to NFL Daily, where we're always moving the sticks. Beyond lucky today to be joined in the Chris Wesseling Podcast Studio by my friend Patrick Claibon and somewhere in sunny San Diego, Daniel Jeremiah. Thanks, Daniel, for, for joining us. Oh, it's nice to be with you guys. It is very sunny, by the way. I don't know how it is up there way up north in Los Angeles, but it is a hot one today. It is beautiful. It's hot here, too. Uh, yeah, look, it's hot in the studio. Whenever, whenever Patrick's here, he's Stop coming it. up straight from Studio 5 where he's doing Fantasy Live. He's going to be with us every single Wednesday. Daniel will not, but hey, it's week one. We wanted to go big <laughs> on this show, and we were able to book Daniel for this week for half the show. He's too big time to stay for the whole show, but we, whole we, thing. we got him. Much. And uh, he's feeling he's feeling good. I, he actually looks like he's styled his hair a little differently. So it's the first time he's changed his haircut since middle school. No, no there's no product. There's no product whatsoever. <laughs> I don't have enough hair to warrant product. So this is just this is what we get here. But, you know, this is like this is like me showing up at the SATs, taking the English and leaving before math starts. That's <laughs> that's basically what our setup is. You, you could just abacadabra uh, the mm. math section uh, like I did. <laughs> Pull it out. You know, just miracles happen. <laughs> I should, I should have done that. Was, the English was strong. Math, not, not as strong. But we're, we're going to be doing math today. We're going to be uh, you know, going over all the games. We're going to be doing it by order of point spread, Patrick. We're going we're gonna to pick some survivor picks. We're going to give analysis. Hopefully, we'll make you laugh. Yeah, it, it, it's going to be all of the fun things. And, you know, just so we know how to prioritize things, we're going to start with the spreads that are a little bit tighter. Uh, and work our way uh, towards the big ones, the the ones that that maybe you know you kind of get the and it's like well that that too much for my blood, but we'll put try to put context on all of them and and let's just go ahead and get started because you guys yeah. you already hit the opener we you know Jackson Mahomes not not Patrick's brother you know the matchup of the two <laughs> uh, two guys who won four of the last six MVPs let's go to Sao Paulo Brazil game in Peacock on Peacock at uh, Arena Corinthians. It's the Green Bay Packers and the Philadelphia Eagles, a couple of teams that have had some overhauls, changing up uh, defenses. Uh, Greg, your thoughts? Yeah, I want to know, just because it was the last time we saw him with this Eagles team, like, does Nick Sirianni have answers and does Kellen Moore have answers to the blitz? And y you think about what Jeff Halfley did at Boston College, and, and DJ, you're the, you're the perfect person to tell me about it because, frankly, I don't know. I, I read it's a lot of man coverage. He's going to get creative. But you would think, DJ, that they're going to make Jalen Hurts and Sirianni and Kellen Moore show that they can answer the questions that they really couldn't at the end of last year where they just couldn't deal with pressure as a quarterback, as a system, as an offensive line. Yeah, I mean, look, Halfley's going to, that's what he's going to do. He's going to try and go nose to nose and challenge these guys on the perimeter. But I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know that they have the horses to, mm. to go after these wideouts for the Eagles. If they do, I think you'll see a little bit more of a vertical passing game from Kellen Moore than maybe we saw with him with the Chargers. Uh, if they're going to force him to do that, he's going to have to do that. And I think they can win those one on one matchups. Um, so I, to me, the if I'm looking at this game, I'm more fascinated to see what it looks like on the other side of it, mm. just to see can, you know, we talk about offensive line and pressures. I think this Eagles defensive line is going to be outstanding once again. And I think you're going to see these young DTs. Um, everything that I've heard and, and talking to folks out there is like, this is a next step year for those guys. And mm. that is, is a nightmare for an offense with the speed they have off the edges. Uh, if they get those two young DTs rolling, those Georgia Bulldogs going, um, that takes this defense to another level with Vic Fangio. Uh, a team that's gotten uh, to the quarterback pretty quickly over the past few years. Of course, a, a big time departure. They go ahead and make the trade uh, with the Jets to kind of alleviate that on, on, on both ends. The in comes a Jet, out goes a Jet, who we don't know yeah. is going to play for the Jets. Um, but <laughs> You've got the birds. So you're saying when he's a jet, he's not a jet through and through. Is <laughs> yes. that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Essentially, all things not jets uh, in this so. particular exchange with the, the Eagles and the Jets. But the birds favored by two and a mm -hmm. half. Um, Jeff Halfley and Xavier McKinney come in. Big time additions. Halfley working a whole lot with the secondary. So I was able to be at Packers camp, talk to Xavier McKinney. Like, I'm a brag. It's, well, yeah, thanks. You know, I, I occasionally leave <laughs> this glorious <laughs> building. Uh, and McKinney, like I made the 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 Saban alligator, like the 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 idea like two coaches both head coaches mm. both like to work with the secondary and X didn't push back on that at all and so that that, that makes me hot but it's just tough uh, it's tough as DJ said to kind of think about 
all the the ability that the Eagles have on all. Right. They they are just so talented if you just stack up all their players and and yet like there there are a lot of questions about this team on defense especially DJ like Yeah. Devin White doesn't make this trip. Something a little strange going on there. There's some reporting in Philadelphia, Jeff McLean of the Philadelphia Inquirer, that he wasn't necessarily going to start. He hadn't been listed with an injury before, so that's just a situation to watch. It's going to be N'Kobe Dean. It's going to be the former Saint, Zach Bond. That's maybe uh, an area of the field that you would think Matt LaFleur with all those receivers that they can flood and the tight ends. I got Luke Musgrave as my backup, as my, my backup nice. tight end on my fantasy team. Just a backup. It's a guy on the bench. And then you have... Is Cooper DeGene going to get in the mix? Quinion Mitchell was in the slot, but can also play uh, on the outside. And just everything is is so different here. First week, like, I favor the Packers offense. I kind of favor the offenses on both sides of the ball and figure this is going to be a score fest. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I I would say on the linebacker front, I feel uh, somewhat relieved because I was a N'Kobe Dean sponsor uh, (laughs) coming into the draft process who elicited the comparison. I believe I hit him with a little Jonathan Vilma as an Mm. undersized, like nerve center player um, who has just got unbelievable instincts and is a communicator, a leader. Like I obviously wish he was a little bit bigger, maybe a little faster, but that's the type of player I thought he could be. And and by all accounts, he had a great camp and, and the lights come on there. So I'm hopeful that that linebacker group would Greg, you're a little bit Concerned about him. I, I'm, I'm. Oh hopeful yeah, that's that your that that's your guy. Nicole Howie's uh, bugaboo. That like yeah. the Eagles are great oh, at know. doing a lot of things, but they don't take linebackers early. Right, but they also haven't figured out how to get productive play. And then when they had some productive play a couple years ago with Kaiser White was solid. He had a tough moment in the in the Super Bowl. They had good linebacker play last year, and then they just let him go, and it was it was trouble. Well, how appropriate oh. because the the comp for the DJ had. Mm. Jonathan Vilma is on the call for our next game. All right. As, as the Giants. Oh, wow, look at that. The Giants getting a point and a half going up against your guy, Greg. Sam Darnold. It's finally beginning. And the Minnesota Vikings, Greg. Not my guy. Uh, I'm sick of He's the such Darnold a hater, hive. Man. He's I such am. A no, Darnold it, hater. Well, because it's a rare case where so many smart people have been bamboozled for year after year and they're they're holding on to this one take that they have and it's not just you <laughs> daniel you know how much i respect you i respect nate tice i respect me the kinds i respect all the people who love this guy but- and yeah like he's gonna be fine it's a good situation and i think this is a nice matchup for him but it's against a pretty good defensive line so can you protect sam darnold is always the question because if you can these Giants cornerbacks, and I like the Adoree Jackson signing because they needed help, but come on. Uh, this matchup, Jordan Addison is going to be out there, and there's just so, you know, the best wide receiver duo maybe in the entire NFL. I like Jalen Naylor. I think they're going to be fine. They're going to be able to protect Darnold, and they'll be able to move the ball against the Giants. So there's a difference, right? I think blindly optimistic is the way that Greg is describing this thing, Patrick, where I think cautiously (laughs) optimistic is a more accurate portrayal of those of us who really liked Sam and have given into the fact that he's not going to be what we hoped he was going to be, but yet holding on very strongly to the belief that with everything else around him, that he can plug and play and be enough. Uh, Mm. And that's, that's where I am with Sam. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping for him and look, I don't know you could have a better situation in terms of the offensive line. I think it's really good. Uh, Darisaw, by the way, I don't know that everybody understands just how freaking good that dude is. Um, But they're really good up front with with the additions in the backfield with Aaron Jones. Go along with the the bevy of receivers and tight ends that they have. It's all there for them. I I don't see – it's hard for me to just envision it not being somewhat successful. So uh, I'm optimistic there. Then you go over to the Giants side of things. Here's a question for you, Patrick. I'll go to you on this Yeah, man. The Giants, if the Giants are going to be even a 500 team, can they be a 500 team if the defense isn't a top five defense in the Oof. NFL? No, unless Malik Neighbors goes absolutely bananas. Yeah. And, and I puts drafted up him, numbers. by the way. And you should have. My fantasy team. Because yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. the volume is going to go nuts. Because w- even with Saquon, right, they, the Giants averaged 3.7 expected yards per carry last year. It's the second lowest in the entire league. And I'm looking at this, this overall number. I said the Giants are getting a point and a half. Uh, the overall number is 41. Mm. And, and I'm looking at both of these. Do, do you think we, we get there, Greg? I, I think, you know, if, if you check out Game Debut on NFL Network with Patrick and I, uh, I think, yeah, I will be going less on this, this game <laughs> when we do the more or less segment. Because 
These lines are really good. Like the Giants defensive line after adding Burns, they were already good when you had two difference makers. I think Kayvon Thibodeau got better last year and is going to continue to get better. And with Dexter Lawrence, the Vikings have a strong line uh, on the interior, maybe not as strong as at the tackle position. And then on the flip side, you know, when I look for surprise teams, I do look for like, all right, who's got a pretty good O-line, D-line combo. Those teams tend to be surprise teams. And the Giants feel better, whether they're right or they're wrong, that with the moves that they made this offseason, they have never been as confident. Their fans, their coaches, everything in their offensive line. We are only used to seeing Daniel Jones behind a bottom five offensive line. And on paper, they might be average. And if they're average, uh, they'll be a respectable offense this year. But this is a big test going against Brian Flores and, and everything that he's going to throw at you. I also think it's going to be when you have uh, – day ball in, in a crucial year for him, it's going to be hard for him not to uh, take that carrot that's dangling in front of him in terms of using Daniel Jones, maybe a little too much in the run mm, game. I, mm. I, I think that's going to be, I mean, this is all hands on deck. We need to win football games and it's hard for me just personnel wise to see them putting up points, Patrick, if Daniel Jones running the football isn't a big part of what they're doing. Which puts a lot on dimes. I know he's added the beard, uh, but we're, we're, we're coming off a full cruise ship repair. I I'm, I think he'll be better this year. I don't think Daniel believes in that. He was given some Drew Locke uh, <laughs> pop, I noticed, on the Move the Sticks podcast. An act, a podcast. Oh, I, I, that, said, I said that I think he, I, I thought Drew Locke would have a chance to win. I think I said that, right? I, said, I yeah, thought he would have a chance, a chance to win the job, which is a literally a board shorts and flip flops podcast summer take, which oh, I did not think. Don't I did try not to think, step back. No, no, no. I, I, didn't, I just didn't think, I thought it was pretty harmless. Like, this is just no. an opinion of, of the way that Daniel Jones has played. And I think, you know, you look at Drew Locke coming in, like, is this the craziest thing in the world to think that Drew Locke could eventually end up getting snaps here? Um, and then I got hit with a barrage of, like, national media, like, hey, can you come on this show? And I'm like, man, there must be nothing going on right now if well, this is making this kind of waves. I'm going to take a little credit for that because I think I was listening to Move the Sticks and I put a tweet out. Yeah quoting you thanks and honestly it got weird. it got yeah. a lot of pop so thank you dj i did want to just quickly yeah. mention before we move on from this game this is a big game for both teams sneaky big i like the vikings in this game the giants start with the vikings and then at washington sometimes the schedule maker gives you a chance to restart start the season well that's that's a winnable uh stretch here to start for the giants the vikings after this game have 49ers texans packers jets lions rams Oof. colts in a row that is brutal so to me, yeah. they kind of got to win this game to, to get a little cushion. Yeah, good luck out there. Folks looking for a quarterback. Here's a quarterback. It's going to be on the call. Tom Brady on the call. With Kevin mm. Burkhart, Aaron Andrews, and Tom Rinaldi as the Dallas Cowboys are at the Cleveland Browns who are giving up two and a half points. The overall number, 40 and a half. Uh, DJ, this this is a, a Browns defense that was stout. Miles Garrett back in healthy. Uh, how do you view this matchup? I'm curious to see how Jim Schwartz is going to do it um, because – you know, traditionally, he likes to just let the four guys go. And then um, in the playoff game last year, uh, Houston, right? And it did not did not go well in the back end. They got really, really exposed. They were dinged up. They were injured on the back end. Um, but I, I think, personally, I think they can get home against this Dallas Cowboys offensive line with four. If they can do that, it's going to be a long day for the Cowboys, especially because I'm still just trying to figure out where the rest of these targets are going to get funneled um, outside of CD, uh, which mm. is another reason why that holdout was so bizarre to me. Cause I'm like, literally he holds all the cards. Um, he might be, you know, he might be the most, they might be the most individually wide receiver dependent offense in the entire league. Um, so I, I don't know where the rest of that's going to emerge from. When I was out there at camp, I had my, uh, I had my doubts and my concerns. Mm. So if, if Cleveland can get home with four, and then they can dedicate coverage to the guy you're looking at in the screen right here and CD Lamb. I, I don't I don't feel great about the Cowboys offense in this game. No, I went back and forth because I, this, these are two teams I don't really believe in either of them, at least relative to their expectations over the course of the season. But yeah, week one and you're throwing a, a rookie left tackle, Tyler Guyton, against Miles Garrett. How's that for like a, a first game and a, a rookie center having to deal with the calls against uh, it's just, it, it's a lot to ask. They they would tell you Jake Ferguson, DJ, and Jalen Guyton. That's where the ball's going? That's where the ball's going, which, yeah, that's that's not deep. And uh, this is one of those games, Patrick, where it's like, it just feels like a very much an extended preseason game. That's what September is like for a lot of teams, but especially these teams. 
Uh, I don't know if Jack Conklin's playing this game. You know, a- as we tape this, it, he wasn't seen really at, at practice, but Jedrick Wills might be returning. Gregory Newsom, Dalvin Tomlinson, Amari Cooper and J- Jerry Judy were out of practice. Like barely any of these guys practiced at all in August. So they're just ramping up. And then we have CD is coming in after just, pl- you know, barely playing. We have these rookies for the, the Cowboys, including at cornerback. Like that's kind of slipped under the radar that, radar, that it's going to be Kalen Carson uh, who's stepping in as a starting so all these rookies who have never played like at an NFL level Mike Zimmer back in the league so it just feels like it's a feeling out game that will probably overreact to one way or another well it's the Dallas Cowboys so it's right. it's a guaranteed overreaction uh re- regardless but I, I think we can't just assume that this Cowboys defense is going to have a defender have a generational performance in the secondary year after year mm. especially now that the Dan Quinn's gone but Tank Lawrence Micah Parsons still there uh the talent is still there in so many spots and and my main concern is we still haven't seen barring like late against the the Ravens last year like a Deshaun Watson led Browns offense score that many points like if you're asking me another about, player who before, barely who didn't practice fully exactly. I- I- during training camp so it's like it, what am I going to believe in more like Dak with a CD and Brandon Cooks and whatever else is left or an offense that features a, a guy that hasn't been good in two three years uh, it's a starting quarterback. I, I, I'm leaning towards Dak. So this this feels like, uh, listen to the three of us here, that we are headed towards a like 13 to 10 <laughs> Tom Brady complaining about quarterback play for four that's... quarters uh, debut. Uh, uh, is that what we're uh, that's what we're headed towards? That would that would be fun. I'm already annoyed that Nick Shook has this game. You know, we're going to be recapping the games on Sunday. Patrick, myself, Nick Shook, and we're dividing up the games. And he's the Browns guy, so he just claims the first uh, Brady game, which I'm annoyed. I might have to rewatch it at some point. Just yes, because I, I will not take guilty pleasure of him, you know, going after Deshaun Watson. If that's what happens, if he's a little critical of Deshaun Watson, well, we'll see. I think Jerome Ford could have a nice season though. Either way, we'll, we will have plenty of time to to appreciate your boy in the booth. Congratulations yeah. to it to an underdog story, uh, Tom Brady <laughs> continuing uh, to overcome. 375, by the way. I looked that up the other day. I'm like, what was that number again? <laughs> yeah. Three, 10 for 375. Oh, his contract. Wow. Yeah, it's nice. It's Woo. good work if you get it. It's time for the game of the week presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Love division games in week one. And do we have a doozy in the AFC South? The Houston Texans at the Indianapolis Colts, an over-under of 48 and a half. The Colts at home giving up three points. Ooh, I didn't really. So the reigning rookie of the that. year. Uh, go, they, we saw these teams with Anthony Richardson play week two last year. He left with a concussion. Both quarterbacks played well. Uh, CJ Stroud threw for 384 in a loss, Greg. Yeah, I just am so excited to see CJ Stroud year two. Like, are we getting too excited? I, I don't think so, because I, I just feel like he he's so next level in terms of how he sees the game and that actually there's still a lot of improvement there from where he can be as a rookie. And for a first week matchup, this provides challenges in terms of his offensive line and how good this Colts front could be. Cause I think just as a front four after adding uh Leatu Latu, they could be there with anyone in the league, but the reputation DJ of Gus Bradley, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, but maybe not the toughest defense to to figure out. And do they have the bodies? Because here are some players starting in their secondary. Juju Brents, J- J- Jalen Jones, probably Nick Cross at safety. And you just think about going up against this trio of receivers and Dalton Schultz and what they can do. It's just, it's a lot to ask of the secondary in a week one matchup. Yeah, um, it's a sound defense. Um, the only thing is, there's there's ways where you can uh, you can attack some linebackers in coverage, and a lot of ways you'll see that done is with the the old three by one formation and the number three receiver on the three side. Those deep overs, a lot of times that middle linebacker has to try and carry him all the way across the field. It's like you know when when coach was uh, was with the Chargers, we would see Tyree Kill uh, with the Chiefs in that spot, and they'd hit that over route against mm. Denzel Perryman a couple times. Um, and you've seen that at different stops along the way. There's just there's little areas where you could try and attack it. Um, but they traditionally are are a really, really good tackling team and they play really, really hard. And I think they've like Chris Boward has been on a, a mission to accumulate as many like athletic freaks as possible. Like it we do the thing at the combine every year. We talk about athleticism scores and they all go to the Colts. Like he takes all of them. Um, so they are very, very fast team. I think you'll see that, especially on the surface in, in that division that they play in, makes it even look faster. 
But I'm with you, Greg, in terms of the C.J. Stroud side, side of things. I think if they roll Tank Dell out there for 17 weeks, like this is going to be some cr- crazy stuff we're going to see with this offense. Everybody's talking about Stephon Diggs and his role coming in there. I'm more excited about can you keep Tank Dell out there for mm. 17 weeks because when he's out there, and that's one, if you want to put him in that number three spot and let him run those overs and, and crossing routes and get him the ball, uh, watch out. So I'm I'm all in on, on Houston. Stroud, to me, even when you just watch the clips, I went back and watched a bunch of stuff over the summer. I thought it was fascinating that they gave him a little too much too early, and then they backed off for a, for a handful of weeks, and then it was like, okay, now he's comfortable, and then he just went on a tear. Mm. And the way he played, it looked like, and this is this uh, this will get me in trouble for for getting clipped off, but CJ Stroud looked like a stronger arm Joe Burrow to me yes. when you watched him, and yes. Joe Burrow's processing, which is just next level, and the it's it's how fast you work with your eyes, but then how slow and grounded you can be with your feet to not get sped up. Like I, that's rare. Like what we saw from CJ Stroud was rare, 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 rare stuff. And I think he's got a little bit more juice um, as a thrower than Burrow does. So, I mean, that's, that's kind of where mm. I view him, which is pretty elite company. Thank you for letting us know before giving us the take that we're going to put up without any context and write like with yes. fire uh, emojis yeah, and fine. trying to get you as much trouble yeah. as possible. Uh, it's going to get in trouble. I got but that. I really do like Drew Locke with the Giants. Yeah, yeah. there it is. There it is. I got, I got the, the number backwards. It's the Houston Texans uh, giving up three points in this one. DJ mentioned the athleticism on the side of the Colts. Uh, the Texans went and got Daniil Hunter, got a little more athletic mm. uh, on the opposite side of the rookie of the year and Will Anderson Jr. Love. Uh, that game of the week, Greg. Yeah, great run-stopping team last year, Houston. I sort of forgot how uneven they were as a defense. Like, they were one of the toughest teams to run against, so that's what Indianapolis obviously wants to do. These games were fun last year. They were fun with with Gardner Minshew, actually, even, too, the second one. Uh, Sneaky, great rivalry. This is the game of the week because it would be my number one draft pick of all those early games of what I want to watch, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to watch it. But we'll see if Jonathan Taylor... And Richardson can run against what was one of the best run-stopping teams in the league and added some extra beef this offseason. We will all look forward to that. But in the meantime, let's take a quick break on NFL Daily before we hit some more games with Daniel Jeremiah. Back on NFL Daily, and I'm excited that we have Daniel Jeremiah along with myself and Patrick Claybon this week, because before the season even starts, I can ask him about his Chargers. He's the radio voice of the Chargers with Matt Moneysmith. A great listen as I drive out of uh, work uh, sometimes on those Sunday night yeah. games and try to avoid the, the traffic. Uh, I was actually surprised how many people like myself fell for it again and picked the Chargers to make the playoffs. I thought people were going to be so down on the Chargers after this preseason because they had some injury concerns that now look like it's okay. Justin Herbert's all all systems go. Joey Bosa's all systems go. They are favored by three points this week in the opener over the Vegas Raiders. Are are we falling for it again in just this whole new uh, generation with Jim Harbaugh? Like, what are you feeling as as Mr. Charger? Well, I, I think there's more anticipation for this opener than any of the previous ones. So this would be my seventh year doing it. Money's done it for eight. And he was in agreement with me on this one that I feel like we know less about this team than any of the other previous ones. Now, mm. the, the takes might have been right or wrong in previous years, but there were a lot of established opinions. Uh, this year, we mine don't know. Were, and mine were almost all wrong. The Chargers did me wrong. <laughs> but I, I I think when you're, you're looking at Jim Harbaugh right here on the screen, um, Things that are undeniable are the fact that it is buttoned up. It is discipline. They are going to be physical. Um, the offensive line, I think, is is the best that it's been in the years that I've been doing it there. Mm-hmm. Um, Joe Alt, I mean, you talk about, a, a look, a baptism now. When you go out there week one and you're going to be looking at Max Crosby and then you're going to be probably see some games are going to be run and all of a sudden here's Christian Wilkins. Like, that's not an easy introduction to the NFL. Uh, but with him and Slater – uh, they're really good at tackle. Uh, Zion Johnson's is had a really good camp and is poised mm. to have a you know kind of a breakout year. So I think the offense line is going to be good. I don't know how the running back share is going to be divvied up. That's probably the most popular question I get uh, between Gus and J.K. What that's going to look like um, defensively with that with the Chargers. 
I'm a big fan of Jesse Minter and everything I've seen from him and what he's done at the collegiate level. And I've seen it with McDonald's defense, the same one in Baltimore that we're going to see in Seattle this year. It's the in vogue defense that they're running. Um, they've got edge rushers. I think uh, Tui Pelotu is uh, is one that people kind of need to get comfortable uh, being kind of a name brand player to go along with Mac and Bosa. They, it, what I'm getting at is they have a lot of talent. They really do. The question marks the receiver room, I, you know, TBD. Um, I think it's Josh Palmer and Lad McConkey between those two who's going to be their top guy. Um, but you can make an argument that there's, you know, they don't have a one uh, with Keenan and Mike gone. So that's that's TBD. Don't know what that's going to look like. And then I think on the other side in the secondary um, is, uh, is is still a question mark outside a corner. Like, how does this group come together? I think Asante Samuel in this scheme is a really good fit to get his hands on some footballs. Uh, Fulton on the other side, you know, that we'll, we'll see how this whole thing comes together, but that would be my question mark on that side. So in this particular game, I don't know that the Raiders offensively are as equipped to take advantage of maybe the question marks hmm. or vulnerabilities. And I say that having attended a 63 point thrashing on a Thursday <laughs> night last year in Vegas, <laughs> that was rough. Um, but uh, I, I'm curious to see, you know, what that looks like for, for the Raiders. If Brock Bowers, as we're recording this, I don't know if we have any updates on. He's at on practice. What his it sounds is. like he's going to play. He, he's expected okay. to I'm play. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful on that one. He, he he might be one of the rookies. If I was, if you're going to say like the three or four rookies you're most looking forward to watch, he would make that list for me. And Patrick, I, I, the reason I would say that is I went out to their training camp. I, I The observation I made was if you took Brock Bowers and you put him in a 80 four jersey and and mixed him in with the wide receivers right and, and you said there's a tight end there who is it you wouldn't you wouldn't know and if you put a 24 on him and you put him in the backfield and actually played him at running back he wouldn't look out of place mm. there either and not just because he's though because you got dylan lobbies so that gives you two white guys in the, in the backfield there so he <laughs> you know you wouldn't know which one yeah. uh did not belong in there but that's the type of athlete i think he is and i think that's going to be a, a major weapon for the raiders so that's kind of a word salad way of saying I don't know exactly what we're going to see from the Chargers. And uh, I think the Raiders D-line is stacked. But I just don't know if the Raiders offense with Menchu is going to be able to take advantage of what mm. the vulnerable spots would be for the Chargers on defense. Yeah, it really comes down to how you feel, right, about Gardner Minshew. Uh, I think Brock Bowers being a nice a number two option considering that Devontae got... 33% of the target share, which is the most in the entire NFL. That's not happening this year, by the way. There's <laughs> yeah. no chance. There's no, no, nothing even close to that. They do have weapons. I mean, yeah. they, they like their offensive line. We'll see. But, Trey but Tucker, are you going to cut Minshew loose? Like, that's that's my thing. Is it okay. this team has a chance to have a top five defense? Right. So, and you've got a defensive head coach in Antonio Pierce. Do you think that he's going to say, hey, Gardner, like, just let's go Gene Shorts and let's just freaking go out there and let it rip? <laughs> Like, there's no way, dude. It's going to be a let's not turn the ball over. Uh, let's be careful. We went with the veteran over the younger player for that very reason. I just don't think they're going to just cut it loose in the passing game like that. So I'm hearing, I'm hearing load up on Zamir White uh, for those uh, who oh, are playing, yeah. the, playing the fantasy. We'll I'm, I'm feeling White. regrets drafting Devante over uh, Chris Olave. The the vibes are, are weird in both places, but it's – the Chargers crack me up. I love it. I hope they continue it. I mentioned it on this show before how they were introduced during their preseason games as Jim Harbaugh and the Chargers. <laughs> it's now like he's the lead singer and they're all of his backup well, yeah. backup band. So I want to see if that continues. You can tell me you'll be in the stadium uh, for the regular season. The the Charger, the Raiders really believe their defenses will be special. We'll see if Antonio Pierce can keep that magic going. They're great up front. It'll be a great test for that offensive line. Uh, absolutely. But man, they, they do have weapons on offense with I, Michael Mayer, everyone said, had a great camp, which you often see tight ends really improve like quarterbacks from year one to year two. Yeah, uh, looking forward to seeing just how they, again, Minshew led, uh, go through that in the Chargers run game. Uh, one of the bottom five in the NFL, I have to think Greg Roman and, and Harbaugh uh, in, the, in the backs kind of fix that. Oh, yeah. Speaking, by the way, before we move on, of, okay. of white guys in the backfield, 300 pound fullback Scott oh, Matlock making yep. his debut for the Chargers, former defensive lineman. That's going to be fun. Him in front of J.K. Dobbins might be my favorite backfield because I'm a I love J.K. Dobbins. He was a guest on this show, and uh, I think he's going to have a, a monster year and is a fun guy to watch. Heck yeah. Welcome back. Oh, J.K. Dobbins. Have healthy. you seen have you seen his hair, Patrick? No. What are we talking about? Oh, yeah. Matlock, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's so I'm, I'm oh, yeah. already I like 300 pounds. I like, I'm I like to give right money now. lines. I'll give money lines to use in the game, which he's never used one of them. But I'll be like, <laughs> dude, this could be it. This could be your your like staple call here. 
So like I was thinking Matlock, if he scores, you know, play mm-hmm. action in the flat, we hand him the ball. You see his picture right now, Patrick? Yeah. What if, just, what, if you, what if what if he just went O'Doyle rules? Bam. <laughs> that's, that's your it. line. Bam. Crush it. Perfect. Uh, it's perfect. Yeah. No, no context necessary. Uh, a call yeah. specifically uh, for, for people of a certain age. And, and we love that. <laughs> uh, so we go uh, to a new era down in Atlanta, our next game. The Arthur Smith revenge game is the mm. Pittsburgh Steelers oh, yeah. come to Atlanta. Who's given up three and a half points. Atlanta favored here at home over under is 42 Joe Davis, uh, G reg mm. and Pam Oliver on the call. <laughs> Greg does Arthur get his revenge. I think he does. That's kind of been under the radar this week. I guess we're just starting the week, but really, we still got some time before the game, but Arthur Smith going in there and taking out, the other Arthur, Arthur Blank in a big spot. Everyone's, you know, putting dirt on this team because they stunk in the preseason offensively. But this isn't supposed to be about the defense. I mean, the offense is supposed to be about the defense and this front seven, which I think has a chance to be really special. Cam Hayward just signed that extension. Keanu Benton could get a lot better. Then you have J.J. Watt, Highsmith, and Nick Herbig as a third rusher. Like, that might be the best defensive front of the league. Like when Larry Ogunjobi is your seventh guy, that's good. I like them. I like them in an upset in this game. What about you, Patrick? I, I, I'm okay. So we got Raheem Morris coming in, inheriting a defense that was top three in rushing efficiency on the defensive side, mm-hmm. going up against an Arthur Smith offense. That's going to want to run the ball. Mm-hmm. I, I think we get a slug fest, but the Steelers need big plays. The Falcons give up some big plays mm-hmm. last year. In comes Justin Simmons. We, we, we know what Jesse Bates can be in Raheem's defense. I think, the Falcons win it. Mm. And I'll, I'll even give you a score, Greg, 1970. Does this mean we have like a little a little face off here? Yeah, yeah. We're we're going head to head. Should okay. Let's uh I, let's I like it. that. I like that. By the way, have you looked at the parallel paths of the two quarterbacks? Like uh same draft class. Uh-huh. Kirk Cousins, Russell Wilson, both, you know, mid non first round picks, mid round picks, both on their third team. Both have a quarterback in their quarterback room that those in their fan base might be clamoring to see sooner than later. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a lot of uh, of similarities there with those uh, with those two guys. So I think that's fascinating. The other thing is I want to see where Pittsburgh's O line is health wise. They've been beat up a little bit. Um, what mm. does that look like? I thought this was based off of the last two drafts a chance to be a really really good young offensive line. I still think, by the way, Frazier. You'll watch if you watch that game. Just peek at the at the center. Uh, for the Steelers and Frazier. He is a stud. He's got a chance to be one of the best centers in the NFL. He's got a lot of Creed Humphrey mm. uh, in him. Uh, so I'm excited to see him, but they haven't had a chance to, you know, have Fatanu healthy throughout camp. He got hurt in the first preseason game. Samalo got hurt. So for a team that wants to be ground and pound and take all the pressure off of Russell Wilson, play great defense, the offensive line to me is the one concern. Now, the good news is the last time the Atlanta Falcons uh, rushed the quarterback, I think I was in my mother's womb. So they <laughs> that's not something that they've ever been able to do. So there's, uh, there's a little bit of help in that regard. Yeah, and I look at Matthew Judon as a, okay, let's see. Because if you, you kind, to me, he was a great hustle player, great leader. I thought his like one-on-one winning pass rush moves fell off a little bit while he was in New England, certainly his last year. He was off the field last year, so maybe that helps him. We don't really know. Uh, but you're right in terms of the offensive line. When Broderick Jones was asked about, like, which side he's playing this week, he didn't know as of Tuesday, unless they're just unless he was just hiding it from the media. They've, they've moved him around left to right. But I do believe just in the overall talent up front and the way that it fits this scheme that it eventually gets there and especially Jalen Warren who is going to play in this game he's healthy and Najee Harris who reportedly had a really good camp not thrilled that they didn't get give him the fifth round uh tender uh, rather uh, the fifth year tender for next year like I think in time they'll be fine and overall I just trust them week one I think continuity is important I know Steelers don't have a ton of continuity on the offensive side in terms of the coaching but Atlanta it's all new and so the one thing I trust in this game is Mike Tomlin and this defense well, DJ mentioned the, the fact that they've been looking for an edge. Uh, they've been looking for a pass rush for so long. They have 81 sacks over the last three seasons. Matt Judon has 32 mm. uh, over that span. That's fair. So it's, it's a good call uh, to, to go get yeah, no, I'm, I'm curious to see what that looks like. By the way, you mentioned Keanu Benton in passing. Like, he's got a chance to be outstanding. Like, like one of the top guys at his position. In a position that's commanded a lot of money lately, and teams seem to be obsessing over even over edge rushers in terms of their impact and importance. 
Um, I think he's got a chance, especially getting a chance to play next to and learn from Cam Hayward. Um, I'm I'm all in on Keanu. Ben, I don't know what I would recommend to money if Keanu was to make a play. I don't know if there's a line, <laughs> there's a Keanu Reeves line that would come yeah. into play there. I don't know. I don't know what that would be. You know, like yeah. I'm thinking it's a sack. That's that's not bad. He knows know. kung fu. There's there's oh, so many. Oh, what about you? Got to go. He, you got to go down, Bodie. You got to go down. <laughs> no one gave sack. me no one gave me any love for coming up with that on the spot. I that, that, was was that was great. It was great. It was great. But we have to celebrate Point Break and the ode to to Los Angeles. Uh, yes. That, that, that Shout out was. to Keanu, by the way. Every year around this time, they show the picture where he holds up the Los Angeles Public Library card because he's a big LAPL guy, just like the Rosenthal family. Nice. We're, we're down. Nice. There. Same. There we go. Shout, shout out to the library. Shout out to investing in communities. Let's go to <laughs> our next game, which is actually because neither the Jags or the Dolphins play the Bucks this year. So it's the Florida State Championship in week one. Uh, Jacksonville at Miami. Jacksonville's going to get three and a half points. Uh, Miami favorited in this one over under 49, almost at 50. Kevin Harlan, mm. Trent Green, and Melanie Collins on the call. Trevor needs to bounce back from having some turnovers, DJ. The Miami Dolphins defense all got hurt, all at key points last season. How do you view it? I'm excited to see the the Jags defensive front. Um, and, and I'm thinking with Heinz Allen. By the way, it is Heinz Allen and not Allen Heinz, by the way. I know I'm going to screw that up. Yeah. Uh, Heinz Allen. I'm excited to see. Yeah, Heinz Allen to go along with Trayvon Walker, who I thought took steps forward last year. I think that could be a really, really good uh, duo on the edge. So I'm excited to see that front, what they look like. Trent Bauke, similar to Chris Ballard, and that he's gone out and got a bunch of long, rangy, fast, athletic players, including when you go to the offensive side of the ball and what they did at the receiver position in the first round of the draft with Brian Thomas Jr. So I, I, I think for a team in Miami that's lauded for their speed, um, I, I think this is a pretty fast and athletic Jags team as well. So uh, you have, uh, you know, the Miami front with so many of those guys coming off of injury. I, I think you look at Jags and their front. I think mm. they're a little bit cleaner healthy wise. Uh, so I like, I kind of like the Jags here to, to open some eyes in this, in this first game, by the way, to put a button on the uh, library, I yeah. do remember the last time I believe that I was in the library was at a as a kid to go get a book for a book report. Come on, bro. And the book that I that I got, which I would recommend to any of your listeners or watchers right now, uh, it was a book on Jerry Markbright, the NFL official. I was like oh. a twelve year old who literally did a book report on an NFL official. Quite certain that is the only time in history that maybe the book's ever been read, but for sure that any 12 year old has ever done a book report on said book. Jerry Barkwright is somewhere celebrating like, Oh, somebody's mentioning my book. And then he's like, Oh, it was the last book he ever read. I killed reading for Daniel Jeremiah. I know. I I know. Come on. Rejected. You're not bringing your kids to the library. You got to raise readers no. like you're raising football players. DJ. I, I love, Let's go. I look at these. Come on, bro. Full of books. Okay. Yes. Look at this. Yes. Lots of books around here. I, I will look that up the Jerry Mark Bright book. Maybe I'll find it for Walker who does like to take uh, like a 1984, you know, oh. Dallas Cowboys book and just read it randomly and, and give me facts from it. Uh, that was absolutely. He's not going to learn a lot of current <laughs> rules, unfortunately, but I believe that came out in the <laughs> mid eighties. I, I thought you hit the nail on the head. I, I'm going to take the dolphins in this game, but three and a half, this is one where I would try to thread the needle and just like, I, I don't trust the dolphins really in this game, but they are at home. Because you mentioned the offensive line being banged up, like Tron Arm said, never out there in camp. Aaron Brewer's coming off of an injury, like the, the, the tackle position. The, their fans are freaking out about their offensive line. Trayvon Walker, I think, you know, everyone said it was going to take him some time, and he did come on at the end of last year. I think the Jaguars are really excited about what they saw from him during training camp. But I go with the Dolphins, even though it's close, because in a week one matchup, I think coaching matters even more. They break out the new stuff. McDaniels become the new Andy Reid where he's got yeah. some special motions and he's got some special run plays. And I think without Odell there, they're actually going to have more formations where they're using Jonu Smith. There's been a lot of Devon Achan as a receiver and just he's going to break out the good stuff. And for whatever reason, I trust him breaking out the good stuff over whatever the Jaguars coaching staff is going to be cooked up. It's a new coordinator. It's yeah. Doug Peterson's fine, but you know, it's an adjustment period. And, and Doug Peterson still, uh, as of this week, uh, says between him and press Taylor, not sure how the plate calling is going to work. I think Doug that knows. Means he's, he's just not he's telling us guy. like he just doesn't want 
uh, us to know. Well, we'll leave that. Has, game. Mike McDaniel has to have a new motion, Patrick. By the way, like that that motion with Tyreek last year, like was all anybody was talking about the first month of the season, and every team copied it. Like he, like that would be as I talked about the other day with Bucky. I said like that would be like going to a party with the new, you know new jacket on and getting nothing but praise and compliments. But like all that does is put pressure on you for the next one you go to that you have to have a different jacket, right? Like he has pressure on him as a coach, maybe more so than anybody else. He has to give us something we've never seen before. This will be a score fest. One just note is that Pat uh, Jalen Ramsey has not been at practice in a while, including on Wednesday. So he might miss this game. Yeah. Do get Jalen Phillips. Uh, he is back after the Achilles injury uh, last year. Hope to see him all the way back as we go to our next game, the Washington commanders and the number two overall pick Jaden Daniels at Tampa Bay, the Dave Canales less uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who are at home and favored by three and a half points, over mm. under is forty four. Can Baker keep the magic of twenty three going? Yeah, in this matchup, I I think he can. I I like the favorite in this game. I like this to maybe be not as close as as people would expect. I think the people are sleeping on the Bucks that they have a lot of continuity. I think a, a really good defensive coaching staff. We'll see how Liam Cohen can do with the offense, but a lot of talent, like close to blue chip talent on both sides of the, the ball. They're my pick in the NFC South and they're going up against a team that, yeah, it, we don't know what we're going to get out of Jaden Daniels, but I just don't think this Washington team is that, that talented on both sides of the ball. I'm going to do a little NFL plus like pro stats. Cause like people think I'm just honking about it to promote the brand. Like, no, that's really good. Third in blitzes last year in terms of Todd Bowles. And yet they had the 10th worst, pressure percentage so that's like not a great sign when you're blitzing that much but you're still not getting that much pressure but when I look at this offensive line DJ this seems like an offensive line that you can get pressure against Washington just seems like it's a bottom two or three offensive line right now so here's my my fantasy plan for this year I went with a lot of rookies I mentioned neighbors earlier uh I ended up I got uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. in the second round like I, I went in I got second a couple of those rookies round. My starting quarterback is Jaden Daniels for uh, for fantasy this year. And this is the plan. It's for the first five or six weeks. And then I, I'm going to probably have to pivot because when I look at the team, the offensive line, I have major questions on this offensive line. The defense, I have major questions. Now, I know they're going to play hard. Um, you know, when, when you're coached by Dan Quinn, the defense is going to play with a lot of effort. They'll find a way to make some plays. But I don't really believe in the talent that they have right now. So I think they're going to be chasing points. I don't think they're going to be able to run the football. I think Jaden Daniels is going to be a big part of this running the ball. I think he'll be able to, to make plays and some of it might come in lopsided losses where they're chasing points, you know, mm. second, third, fourth quarter. But I think he's going to be a very productive, not just a highlight real guy, but he's going to put up real numbers, real stats. But I worry about the longevity of this thing with how much of the offense he's going to have to put on his back, especially as a rookie. But I do think statistically he's going to get off to a much better start than the team itself is going to get mm. off to, if that makes any sense whatsoever. No, it makes perfect sense. And he, he was able to carry a huge a statistical load at, at LSU. The concern, the carryover, which we saw a little bit in the preseason, was he would kind of go like, Hi, I'm Jaden Daniels, and welcome to Jackass. Like a few plays <laughs> where it's just like he's taking massive shots, and then we saw him yeah. run to the sideline, took a needless shot in the preseason. And Dan Quinn is like, "Hey, what are you doing? Like, get that, get that stuff out of here. We're gonna need to see uh, the rookie." But it's it's just at home for Tampa Bay. Uh, first career start for Jaden Daniels. I, I would have to go with the Buccaneers. Yeah, I, there's there's a lot of questions. They just gave Sam Cosme, by the way, where we're. As we're recording this, they gave a big contract to their guard, Sam Cosme, who is one solid piece of their offensive line. But I, I look at Dan Quinn, and I think he plays more man coverage than just about any team. But who do they have at, at cornerback? There, there was some uh, talk that San still DJ, might start at outside cornerback, like or get snaps there nickel, too. Yeah. Like he's going to play inside when it, when they have three cornerbacks, because that's where he's great. But that he's better than what they have. I don't think they're a fan of Forbes and, and Michael Davis is there as a veteran. So to me, you're, you said it, you're not going to be able to run the ball against this Bucks run defense. They're just good nope. year after year. So that's just a lot on Daniels. And I don't think the cornerbacks hold up. I, you know, uh, I feel great about this pick. This is, this, this is feels one, like, one this feels I'm like circling. a 30, like a 30 to 17 type game. But okay. like, I think I think Jaden Daniels could pack in a lot of fun into those uh, into those seventeen points. Yes, and for the listeners that have been asking, uh, we are going to be doing some picks this year on the show. I'm going to be doing that with Cynthia Freeland. I'm going to 
be going against her model. Man versus model. <laughs> the rainmaker versus the computer. And so that that's coming up later in the week. But by the I, way, by the I'm way, circling this. Can we yes. go? Let's go man versus machine because man versus model could take well, that thing in a whole Okay, I get direction. it. But she always talks yeah. about it's her model. She that's how she's yeah. branded it, but and you're right. Maybe machine is better. Greg's real big on SEO, uh, DJ, and that would hit. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> that would hit. Uh solid, <laughs> solid SEO joke out of 2008 from Patrick. Uh, what a nice. great time it was to have uh, Daniel Jeremiah, who is not above some dad jokes uh, and does a great job on his podcast, Move the Sticks. So for the first time, you've decided to continue it during the NFL regular season. It's not just a nice. draft show this year. So congrats, DJ. I had, Hytham promised me time and a half after 30 minutes. So let's just make sure that that <laughs> check gets shipped yeah. down here to San Diego. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, just wait for it in, in the mail. Uh, thank you, DJ. We are going to take a, a quick break, and we'll be back. Patrick and I will do the rest of the games. Back on NFL Daily. Seven games to go through, starting with a delicious one. Sunday night football, the rematch. Rams at Lions. The Lions are favored by three and a half in this game. And for some reason, I don't know why, I feel so much better about the Lions coming into this season than the Rams. When last year, when the season was ending, I thought the Rams were going to win that game, first of all. They were in Lions territory with a chance to take the lead late in that game before a penalty backed them up. And then they, they punted it and they ended up losing what to me was a coin flip type of game. And yeah, the Lions added some good pieces in the secondary. That is part of it. But I think it's the weird preseason the Rams have had that have included a lot of injuries. And we're going to probably have to wait till Sunday to see how healthy this offensive line is. Puka Nakua has been out there at, at practice, but wasn't 100%. And maybe it's the injuries. It's just some weird vibe stuff where they, they trade Ernest Jones and they're starting Troy Reader. I thought it was going to be this undrafted kid, Omar Spates, who I think eventually is going to take that job um, from, from what the reporting has been. But for now, it's Troy Reader. And I actually think that matchup is a good place to start, Patrick, because I look at the middle of the field and I just think that's where the Lions absolutely kill you. And that's where I'd be a little concerned if I'm the Rams in those linebackers. Yeah, it, it, that, that is the concern. But they would have never been in that circumstance uh, had they been like, oh, well, we're not going to be able to make it work without Ernest Jones. And, and I think it's honestly par for the course. Like if you consider the Cam Akers situation, mm. there's, there's always some sort of Derek weird, Goff. Yeah, weird vibe, uh, guy departs and it's maybe it ends up working out for Ernest Jones in, in, in Nashville and, and working out uh, for the Rams. I just, I'm, I'm seeing a healthy Matthew Stafford and, and you just have to, I have to start there uh, because when Stafford is on, he's just so good. You mentioned the fact that it was a coin flip and, and we do, to have the benefit of hindsight, and we look back at some of these playoff games as though, like, that was the outcome that was destined by the universe. Right. But it's just, it's not always. No, not I think always. the Rams would have made the Super Bowl if the simulation played out the NFC playoffs 10 times. They would have made it twice, exactly twice. And, and so it's, right, Jared Verse and Braden Fist come in. No, they're not going to replace Aaron Donald. Literally no one can, but it can be different. And we had questions about the Rams' defense where they were just kind of, bubblegum and airing it together and several of those guys panned out i'm i'm comfortable uh, i'm comfortable with, the, with them too i the just rams. think the lions are going to be one of the best teams in the nfl yeah and they have great continuity and the rams have have solid continuity too but again i'll go back to the rams defense i do want to talk about their offense tredavious white darius williams that's their outside cornerbacks two names we haven't really talked about on nfl daily much and yet I think they're going to be so important for this team. It could really work out. I think they liked everything they saw at True Davis White. Could be a great value pick. So could Darius Williams, who left the Rams, had some up and down years with the Jaguars. Now he's back. They're, they're in a big spot here. This defense might go as far as kind of those two cornerbacks take them. And yeah, going up against our guy, J-Mo. It's J-Mo breakout season. I don't know if he's our guy, but I'm rooting. No, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a J-Mo guy. And I, I think that that number of 50 and a half, uh, is in is in danger. It, yes, it, it, the number is in danger. Uh, coming up on Sunday Night Football, Mike Tirico, Chris Collinsworth, Melissa Stark uh, to kick off 
the season. What about another rookie quarterback going up against the second-year quarterback as we go to the Tennessee Titans mm. at the Chicago Bears? The Chicago Bears at home, four-point favorites. Adam Amin, Mark Sanchez, Christina Pink <laughs> on the call. We get to see all that talent around the number one overall pick, who you think is the most talented of the group, Greg. Yeah, well, of course he is. I mean, then <laughs> this is an easy first matchup. I mean, I, I, I don't want to be dismissive of the Titans. Oh, but, get them, Greg. But I, th- I think if you were choosing who you play week one, now I guess the one concern would be the offensive line of the Bears. Can can they protect Caleb? But in the back end, like, Legereus need want to see what he looks like. Obviously a great pickup, but he's had his knee issues where he can't practice that much. He mean, you know maintains it. But we don't know about Chidobi Wuzier. We don't know about the safety position totally there in Tennessee. And I just think Chicago sends so many different players at you that it's going to be tough to deal with. Yeah, Legereus need comes over, right? Okay, that that's great. But when you consider Romo Dunze, um, and, and Keenan Allen, uh, also DJ Moore, DeAndre Swift out of the backfield, there's just a, a lot of guys that can hurt you in a lot of different ways. But I am interested to see the the Callahans just mm. in general, because mm. right? it's a completely rebuilt the Callahan off, offensive line. If you're talking about like names where people think it's just gonna like Stoutland Callahan. It, the improvement in the offense. What does that do for Will Levis? I, I want to see uh, Calvin Ridley here, but the, 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 the juice, it's just too exciting in Chicago. I, I'm gonna I still got to, I, I do want to catch up and watch that last Hard Knocks and, and see what was going on. The edits that they had on the Caleb Williams passes that I saw on, on Twitter were like, <laughs> just incredible. Like NFL films is always doing some wild stuff. You, you mentioned the offensive line. I do think this team is going to go kind of go as far as their running game takes them. Spears and, Tony Pollard, that could be a special duo with Will Levis running the ball too. Like they could be a lot closer to what the Colts are offensively. I think than people realize because Levis is a bad man with the ball in his hands. Like he worries you, but he is a absolute threat in the red zone. Pollard just from the little I saw in the preseason had juice. I think Tajay Spears is going to have a great year, a great career. So that is an awesome group and it's against a, a bears group that isn't as good up front, but has unreal continuity in the back end. And that's why I, I kind of favor the bears in this game that they have too much on both sides. Uh, I don't know four points a lot for like a new team like the bears, but I do think continuity week one. It, I heard Bill Belichick talking about it too, this time of year that like, it really does matter for some of these teams that haven't played at all in the preseason and have everything new. Like the bears have a lockdown secondary. It's sort of the opposite of the last game we right. talked about. The Lions have an all-new secondary, which actually worries you against Puka and Cooper Cup and Stafford. It's all new. Yeah, they're talented. They've never once played together. It's going to test their communication. I trust the Bears' communication. And, uh, yeah, I even think I'd like them over four points. Yeah, and and the one new piece, (laughs) the new piece uh, in that Bears' secondary has a revenge game. It's Kevin Byard. I guess a revenge game against his former team, the Tennessee Titans, after a stop that didn't go uh, like we thought it would as the Philadelphia Eagles kind of fell apart on the back end at the end of 2023. Um, Let's go ahead and go to our game in the NFC South. Greg and I have already disagreed on the importance of this game and significance of it out of sheer disrespect. I'm just kidding. Um, The Carolina Panthers. What do you mean? I'm watching this game Sunday. (laughs) The Carolina Panthers at the New Orleans Saints in the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Uh, The Saints favored by four points. The over-under is 41 and a half. Chris Myers, Mark Schlereth, Jen Hale watching Derek Carr try to rebuild his relationship, Greg, (laughs) with the city of New Orleans. Okay, so you said it. We already disagreed, I guess, on how important it is. Because, yeah, I think this is the most important game any team has all week (laughs) is the Saints. Because if they're losing this game early, they will be the first fan base to boo. No question. No question at all. The vibes will be horrendous. I don't think it's going to happen because I think the Saints defense, and it might be because, you know, I, we spoke with Honey Badger uh, on NFL Network. I got to, and he really convinced me that this defense is just like prime. And it, it is such an old defense. Demario Davis and Cam Jordan and Tyron Matthew being like three of the absolute leaders. And yet I, I think with the rise of Elante Taylor, he reportedly was like the player of training camp that he's going to be that improved. Marshawn Lattimore is back at practice and a Debo. I do think it's a tough first matchup for Bryce Young and that they'll just have an, enough that it might not be an exciting game, but they'll, 
be able to kind of squeeze the life out of the Panthers here and and save those boo birds. Get it get an early lead and it won't be pretty, but it'll be like kind of a typical. I feel like the, the Panthers and the Saints have played this game before. Hell, they played it in week two on Monday Night Football last year. And and ultimately, right, because we we talked about a couple of teams that don't necessarily have the horses in the secondary. Kool-Aid McKinstry joins that group mm-hmm. as well. I, I think they can be really good. But as you mentioned, right, the agenda is is out there. Um, you you will probably hear some rattles in the stands mm. if things don't go don't go correctly. Oh my god! <laughs> for, I didn't even think about that. Are people going to buy rattles? That's oh amazing. yeah. No, it, it, it's it's going to be a thing, but it will not be a thing um, if if the Saints can be successful on offense. And we'll have to see how Clint Kubiak is especially going to deploy Alvin Kamara, uh, Chris Olave as well. There, there's all these pieces that we've seen for such a long time. What are they going to look like in a no Sean Payton, Pete Carmichael mm. type situation. It's it's all new. It's all different. And does it bring life back to the site? This week, I think it does because just the offensive line is going to be the biggest question mark of this team all season long. Trevor Penning, maybe they're still going to roll him out there right tackle. We're we're not totally sure. There's He's not the only question. The good thing for the Saints is they'll be tempted to put him out there this week because he's going up against what might be the worst pass rush in the entire NFL, especially if Jadevian Clowney isn't healthy enough for this game. But I think he'll be out there, but they're really thin. So I think this is a rare game where Derek Carr can sit back there and be protected. I think Bryce Young is going to be a lot better this year. I think this is going to be a professional offense. I just think the amount of improvement that they have in offense is going to be mitigated by their defense getting worse. Maybe not equally worse, but getting worse. And I think it's a great matchup if you're in fantasy Right. Anyone playing the Panthers every week, like if you're ever going to use Rashid Shahid, if he's out there practicing healthy, if you're going to use you know Kamara in a league that doesn't have flex order, like this is this is the week to do it. I think the Saints uh, like this matchup. Well, either way, if if the defense is giving up buckets, then it gives Bryce an opportunity sure. to go out there and inflate the stats a little bit more and have people feeling better uh, about his next season in the NFL. We'll leave there and go to some Monday Night Football. Aaron Rodgers returns to the football field for the Jets on the road against the team that he dreamed of playing for as a child, the San Francisco 49ers at home, favored by four and a half points. The over under is 44. Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, Lisa Salters uh, watching. I used to it's still hard not to call him 12, eight out there oh, yeah. against the 49ers. Greg. I, I love this. Uh, if you're, if you're in the UK and you're listening to NFL daily, Hello, by the way. Hi. Uh, nice to hear from you. And we love all of our international listeners because we see it. It's in, they're in Australia, they're in Germany, they're in Canada, they're everywhere. Uh, but the UK listeners, if you watch Monday Night Football on Channel 5, I'll be doing this game with Maurice Jones Drew and giving the analysis throughout. So I'm doing that throughout the year, not every week, but I'm doing this week one. And it, what an awesome week one. I think it's a good matchup for Aaron Rodgers because when I think about what's going to give Aaron Rodgers trouble is what gave him trouble, even in those couple of plays that he played last year, when defenses show one thing and then do another and just hold, make him hold the ball a little extra because he likes to freelance and figure it all out himself instead of always playing within the offense. It's like the Aaron Rodgers offense. As good as the 49ers defense should be, they're not as good as they were up front in the past. And I don't think they're a defense that tries to trick you. They're just a great, solid defense that will line up. And I think Aaron Rodgers will know to get rid of the ball more quickly in this matchup, trust his weapons. And it's an, I mean, this is, it was a perfect choice. It, it's kind of, you know, kind of tempting fate to put him on Monday Night Football again to start the season. But yeah. He won't be running out with the flag. That was that was a cool moment, but he won't, won't be doing and that. And probably not back-to-back plays where the tackles are cutting uh, to start the season. I, I would think it's just um, we're, we're going to figure out uh, how to protect Aaron Rodgers uh, a, as things go. But in terms of protecting him, uh, the 49ers a top 10 pressure defense a season mm. ago. Um, in, in terms of how they attack them on offense, probably a lot of uh, Tyler Conklin, but it's just been so much good news. So much good news uh, for the 49ers over the past. You asked me this question about this game a week ago. Yeah. I, I would be completely different. We Prop 71 passed. We, we got Trent. We got I Trent. I mean, what don't, be, don't be humble about it. Anyone that listened last week and heard the voice of God, Patrick Claibon, uh, make it happen and get this California legislation through. I wish my local government was as proactive as the 49ers were getting this contract. Yeah, the, the whole point of Prop 71 was get, to get Trent Williams paid 
Uh, Trent Williams' brother broke the news that he was gone on the way to Santa Clara to get the deal uh, finalized and the best player on the team, the guy's going to the Hall of Fame, back. That makes the difference with Trent and no Trent is always significant for the 49ers. And, and so I, he's back. They're, they're a great team, a play away from the Super Bowl. You could argue maybe a half a play away from the, winning the Super Bowl over the Chiefs last year. I'm, I'm, I'm Niners here. I'm Niners here too. Four and a half points feel, feels like a lot. I do think when the 49ers have the ball, it's the best offense defense matchup of the entire week after the kickoff game. Cause I do trust Robert Salah's defense, especially in that secondary. They gave Michael Carter, their, their slot cornerback, a big contract this week. It's just so locked down that, Actually, Ayuk, who hasn't had a lot of practice time. Trent Williams hasn't had a lot, a lot of practice time. Purdy was kind of weird in the preseason. McCaffrey coming off of an injury. If, if I am a team on the 49ers schedule, and it's determined four years ahead of time <laughs> that you have to go to the, on the road to play the 49ers, so you're on it, and you're going to have to go there no matter what. This is probably the week to play them. I, I give the Jets defense a better chance of really slowing down a little Robert Sala revenge game just defensively oh. keeping this to a defensive game so yeah i i think the over under here is 44 yeah this i don't really feel that strong about either team in this game but i like it to be more of a defensive game a, a fun kind of old school game on monday night football all right so greg says that 44 not in danger there we have an over under a 41 and a half mm. for our next game in a big favorite as we finish up with some big favorites the seattle seahawks and gino eugene cyril smith uh favored by six points over the just named uh, on Wednesday, dang captain of the team, rookie quarterback Bo Nix getting his first career start. Greg, dang, I didn't know they were such big favorites. Uh, I thought I was being bold by putting up a <laughs> crooked score here because, yeah, you know, I let's be on it. I'm not, I am biased, but I also believe in it. I think Peyton versus Mike McDaniel. I mean, uh, Peyton versus Mike McDonald is just like an incredible matchup coaching wise when you have the ball. But one quarterback is is just starting out and one defense. Yes, it's the first time at McDonald's coaching this, but it's a veteran group. And I think he can get Nick's like just moving faster and that Mike McDonald and this defense is going to just throw so much at him that he just starts either speeding up or holding the ball and not knowing what to do. And Sean Payton, it's going to be hard for him to give as many quick answers, get guys as open. I'm so big on this Seahawks secondary. It's one of the reasons why I'm big on the team. Yeah. And, and looking at the, I, cause you mentioned, right. All, everybody got crowding the line of scrimmage guys getting their hands on the ball. It makes me think of Mike McDonald's Ravens defense on the road in Santa Clara last mm. year and all those tip balls against Brock Purdy. Uh, because there, there's going to be a lot of Bo Nix action in the middle of the field. Again, this guy started more games than anybody in the history of college football going back to the 1800s. So he's, he's got a lot of experience, even though it's not uh, here at the NFL level. I think he can be a solid guy. But again, first start on the road of the Seattle Seahawks. That's asking a lot uh, of your... It record. is, and yet, like, the Seahawks have an over-under this year of seven and a half. So I, I know they have a tough schedule, but if you think about it, Vegas is saying that they're a sub 500 team and yet they're one of the biggest favorites this week. That is a lot of disrespect to Denver, who I think is going to be competitive this year. And I, I think does ignore a little bit the fact of the question marks that the Seahawks have, because I do want to bring that up. The inside linebackers, I, I think, are going to be a problem potentially for for the Seahawks. Tyrell Dodson and Jerome Baker. Baker hasn't been healthy. They actually traded for a rookie to give them some depth there because I don't think McDonald's feeling confident. And so that's where Sean Payton tends to win a lot too. Quick throws over the middle of the field. Bo Nix can certainly do that. They also have a very shaky offensive line on paper. Connor Williams is coming back from a torn ACL. Just started ramping up his work with the hope of starting week one. But that's an area that maybe the Broncos can attack too. I'm, I'm not that that down on this Broncos team. I can see their vision that the defensive line could be a little better with Baron Browning, uh, and then my guy Zach Allen, like a little Jonathan Franklin Myers, who they traded for on draft day. Like that could give some issues to Gino. Ultimately, like I like the Seahawks big in this game, and yet like the the overall talent level, it's not it's not crazy to to think that the Broncos can cover here at the least. And the most talented player on the Broncos got the news on Wednesday. Uh, Patrick Sertan getting his extension as one of the highest paid cornerbacks now 
in the NFL, and he will go up against DK Metcalf and Jackson. So State many players got paid this week, just like everyone got paid this week. Why do we have to wait? I guess just just deadlines. That's how that's how it works. Yeah, just pay everybody early. Uh, okay. we, we'd be okay with that before uh, we get into the season. Let's go to our next game: Arizona at Buffalo. The Buffalo Bills with all the changes on offense and defense, favored by six and a half points. Over Kyler and company, the over-under is 48. Ross Tucker, our friend Tiffany Blackman, Jay Feely, mm. and Tom McCarthy on the call as I think the Arizona Cardinals, Greg, have a chance to go in here and get a win. Whoa. What do you say? I could not disagree with you more. We are going to be doing survivor picks on this show each week, so we're going to help you in your survivor pool. We're not allowed to participate in that. We work for the NFL, but what we can... <laughs> do is uh tell you who we would pick and yeah i i love the bills in this game i love them to win the game and just move on in your survivor pool but it's six and a half and i i love them to get over that i, I as i mentioned i'm teasing uh i'm gonna be making some picks with, with cynthia later in the week but i think josh allen in this game over under 350 total yards from scrimmage over under 40 points for the bills and that like Kyler Murray, yeah, you can go put up 28 in this game and you still lose by like 12 points. I just am not buying what the Cardinals are putting out there on defense, especially in a game like this where I trust the offensive line, trust the quarterback. I think they have good continuity. I know Stefan Diggs isn't there, but they know the guys that, that are there. They're adding some fun to the mix with Keon Coltman, certainly. Like, I'm big on the Bills. If I'm going to pick them to win the Super Bowl, I'm going to pick them to win in week one against the Cardinals. Yeah, you can lose in week one and come back and win the Super Bowl. Shout out to last year's. Not in camp. Survivor pools. Yeah, you no, can't. In a survivor, I, by the way, I just think you. there's no point in Survivor pools to outsmart yourself in week one. There's a reason that there's only one game this week with a point spread over seven points. Like every, even every, every point spread this week is a one score game because week one, you just don't know what, what the heck's going to happen. Yeah, you, you, you outwit and you outlast. Uh, and you survive. Uh, that's the goal of a survivor. But you mentioned, Greg, the possibility Arizona scores 28 points. I, I think that's going to be enough. I, I think I got Arizona 28 right. 27 because, okay, Jordan Poyer played 98% of the available snaps for the Bills. Yeah. Micah Hyde played 92%. There's no Matt Milano for the first quarter of the season. I, I'm not doubting the long term viability okay. of the Buffalo Bills, but I can see here in a spot where Kyler runs around, uh, the rookie gets a touchdown. Uh, the, the Arizona Cardinals defense makes a couple plays. Buda Baker gets one. Mm. And, and the Cardinals go in there and knock off the Bills. To what? This is like an anti DeMar Hamlin agenda? Like, I like the fact that DeMar <laughs> that's Hamlin's that's starting at safety. Way to phrase that. I, uh, I like it. What a story. Yeah, DeMar Hamlin is expected to start in this game, which is, which is wild at safety. I hear what you're saying on this, the safeties. I don't think Jordan Poyer was quite the same player as he used to be. Micah Hyde, it, it's weird. He's, he's still out. Like, he, he retired, and there was some talk. Maybe he will return at some point. I do like their cornerbacks, but the safety group it is a concern. I don't think they're going to be a lockdown defense. I'm excited to see my two-lane guy, Dorian Williams, try to step in for Matt Milano. He's a fun player, very aggressive, but you can probably get him to overcommit in the running game, and they have a great play-action game, and Kyler's going to be running. Yeah, I think they put up 25, 28. I just don't trust the defense, and it's a, it's a score fest. All right, the score. Everybody's got a score fest, which is great. It's great for everybody watching at 1 p.m. on CBS. Looking forward to that game, and let's finish it up, Greg with your New England Patriots. Yes. Visiting the Cincinnati Bengals, who are favored by eight points. An over-under of 41. Ian Eagle, uh, Charles Davis, our dear friend, and Evan Washburn. On the call, Greg, eight points. That's a lot. I mean, we're supposed to make survivor picks here. You haven't made one, Patrick, so is this your pick? I'm going to tell you, Greg, because I think the Cardinals are going to win that game. This is my survivor. Okay, okay. Pick. well, I know. You could have picked someone earlier. <laughs> I just wanted to wait okay. until we got here okay. because I am not picking the Cleveland Patriots to beat the Bengals at home. Okay. I mean, disrespectful. I don't know if it's disrespectful. I think people... What would be All right, what was the most watched game in the entire preseason? You may not know this. It was Patriots Commanders. Oh. So everyone watched that game and their offensive line. Clearly, they were tuning in to see the Patriots. Right. was absolute trash in that game and they weren't healthy. Verdarian Lowe's supposed to be back. Like we're trying to get excited that uh, their left tackle Verdarian Lowe. No, I think it's going to be a pretty big problem for them protecting Jacoby Brissett in this game. Um, the bigger problem I think actually is that the Patriots defense just might not be special without Barmore and Judon. Christian Gonzalez reportedly kind of had an up and down camp. We'll see when it, like it's only camp. We'll see when it matters, but 
are these guys that Belichick got a lot out of kind of the veterans like that showed up like, oh, wow, Jabril Preppers is is good. Oh, like uh, Tavai is suddenly good. Like, are those guys going to stay as good and keep it going with Gerard Mayo? That worries me against uh, Joe Burrow and this team. And some news on Wednesday, Jamar Chase back at practice. And now that Jamar Chase is back at practice, it sounds like he looked good on this one route that they put out there and doing a stop route. It sounds like he's going to play. I actually feel even stronger about my whole Yoshivas thing. I think Yoshiva, as much as we've talked about Andre Yoshivas, is like he's the third guy. I don't think people understand how talented he is. I think by the end of this year, we're going to say, okay, like it's going to suck to lose T. Higgins, but they have another high quality starting receiver that can be a number two. Because he kind of reminds me, not to honk too much about Yoshivas, he reminds me a little bit of Tariq Woolen, but as a receiver, in that, like, he went late in the draft. But his physical skill set is so bananas that if he can figure out how to play at the NFL level, he's just going to be a freak. And he has figured it out by all accounts that I think he's going to be awesome. So for him to be the three, and I think that's going to be a problem. Like Marcus Jones is the Patriots slot corner. He is about five, <laughs> eight, one seventy. Like that, that's going to be a problem. Yeah, it's just a terrifying uh, combination of size and speed for Yoshi, who, who I think um, is, is looking forward to a solid season. And, and not to be disrespectful. Of the New England. I think the spread being, because it was at eight and a half. I, I think eight may be more disrespectful than me taking them in a survivor right, situation. No, you got to take someone. It makes sense. <laughs> and so, yeah, I'm, I'm okay uh, with the Patriots here, but I, I think we're, we're a couple games. It's, yet the, it's the beautiful thing about week one, though, because I think that makes sense as the, the team least likely to win this week is the Patriots. And yet, like, would it really shock you that much? I don't think it wouldn't shock me that, like, once we get to week. St- like 13, like eight, like an eight point spread won't seem as big. There'll be like four or five games like that are bigger than that. Like it wouldn't shock me that much just because there's so much unknown and who knows, Keon White gets it going. Who knows? Maybe the Patriots get fired up by the most random moment there we go. of the entire NFL daily podcast that you're going to hear. Maybe they get fired up and watch a tape of expatriate Rob Ninkovich imitating Mac Jones during the week. Let's listen. Oh. The demeanor alone between Mac Jones and Drake May are completely different. Oh, yeah. Like, I could listen to freak. Yeah, you know, I just um, got to keep working and um, got to get better. And, um, you know, I'm just going to keep working hard. And uh, we're just yeah, everybody together. And, um, yeah, it, it wasn't wasn't my best. And I got to be better. And over and over and over and over again. I'm, I'm going to make the, the Bengals a 10-point favorite. Okay. <laughs> I knew Patrick wouldn't like this, and yet, <laughs> and it's mean, and I apologize to Mac Jones for, for that. Oh, Mac will be all right. He's glad to be out of it. But that. when he, I heard that impression, I was just like, I want that to be heard by more people. That was a new, that, like, he, if you close your eyes, that was... That was Mac Jones. That was his, like, I have listened to so many Mac Jones press conferences and that was, that was it. That was my biggest like jump scare of the week. The second biggest was when Matt Patricia showed up on uh, the underdog Bill Belichick show where they like panned to him and suddenly it was Matt Patricia, but he looked completely different. Have you seen this? Kind no, of? there's a new Matt Patricia. There's a new Matt Patricia and new he kind of looks like, dropped. like an evil character from like, Grand Theft Auto. And it was amazing. And Underdog is doing an awesome job over there. Of course, he the call. And of course, uh, that Belichick show, which I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to doing this every week with you, Patrick. I hope you don't mind too much. I put that mm. random uh, impression at the end. No, I love it. I, I love it. I, your, I need, your Alabama guy. I, I need to get um I need to get Malcolm Butler to to go on the show with Matt Patricia and, and talk about what happened mm. the Super Bowl so we could relitigate that. I would love to hear that. That was the Dan and Ninko show, by the way. So we got to give credit to the Dan and Ninko show, the podcast. This was great. We're going to be doing this every week. It's usually going to be Steve Weiss with us in the Chris Wesseling podcast studio. So I'm looking forward to that next week. Also looking forward to Thursday night. We are going to be recapping the game live on YouTube. So check out myself and Jordan Rodriguez. We'll be about 15 minutes after the end of the kickoff game. We finally made it, Patrick. We're here. Football. Is back. back.